So, you want to design your own 3D prints, huh? Well, I've been doing 3D design for 15 years and designing my own 3D prints for five. It's actually really easy when you have the right piece of software. We'll be using 3ds Max here, and you can get yourself a free educational copy as long as you're a student somewhere and can prove it. It can be quite expensive, but in my opinion, it is definitely worth it for a few reasons that we'll cover in later episodes. But first off, it's July, so let's build a snowman. Over here, we have our creating and modifying of objects. Over here, we have how we're going to move, rotate, scale, or adjust the object. And then down here is where things get precise. Now, if your view looks like this, that's OK. Just click on one of these four views, and then you can maximize it here. As you're creating your object, you'll definitely want to adjust your view. If you hold Alt and press the mouse wheel in and drag, this will rotate your view. If you just hold that middle mouse button without pressing Alt, you can move this way and you can scroll with that mouse wheel. I have actually gone through several mice because I've burnt out their mouse wheels. 3ds Max will be very hard on that key. For the snowman, we can either start with the sphere or a geosphere. They're basically the same thing. But you're going to click on sphere, click somewhere, and drag to create that sphere. Now, I have mine set to work in millimeters here. You can work in whatever units you're familiar with by going to customize unit setup, and you can choose metric millimeters. A uh, snowman made in kilometers would be too big to 3D print. And you can also work in US standard decimal inches. For working with 3D prints, you're probably going to want millimeters to be what you work in, because when you save your file and import it into your 3D printing software, most 3D printing software is expecting all the files to be in millimeters. And if you're an American like me, don't worry, you can come over just going to go back to where I can edit that sphere in the modify panel. If all I know are inches, that's perfectly fine. Because if I want this thing to be two inches in diameter, I can type in one inch for radius, hit enter, and it will automatically convert it. And if I'm stuck as an American working in fractional inches, I can actually type in three over eight inches. And you can even do one foot 2.5 inches, and even that will convert. So right off the bat, 3ds Max is amazing for working in multiple sets of units and having it all work together. But let's say we want our snowman we 3D print to be about four inches tall or 100 millimeters. This bottom sphere should get us most of the way there. And what's important when building a snowman is that all the pieces are kind of stacked on top of each other somewhat evenly. So what's going to help with that is you can see these numbers changing down here as I move the mouse cursor around. I'm going to click Move, make sure I have that sphere selected, and I'm going to select that and press 0. So now he is centered on the x-axis. Now, if you're just trying to make things say zero, instead of selecting and typing zero, you can actually just right click on these arrows here and it'll center it. Instead of creating a whole nother sphere and having to move it over and then move it up to stack it, I'm going to select this one, right click, clone, and give ourselves a copy. Now, all I have to do is raise that guy up and I can just type in a number there, and then I can shrink that section down. And now we can take a look around, and that looks like a well-stacked body section. Last, we have the head, so we're going to clone, copy, move them up, shrink it down, And we can see that that is not really going to attach well, so we need to bring them down just a bit. 
Now, assuming it doesn't have to be precise, something you can do that's very quick and easy is just drag up and down on the Z, the X, or the Y, or some combination of the two. Now our snowman needs a face. Instead of creating another sphere and trying to move it on up here, we're just going to hit clone again. Now these spheres are going to be a lot smaller. And we can move them out to the front. For all these mouthpieces, while we could copy, move, copy, move, that would get very tiring. So what I'm going to do is hold shift and move along X and Y, something like that. Choose instance and raise that number up. So we're gonna make four copies, but because we're doing instance, not copy, you'll see why that's important here in a second. Just gonna move those guys into position real quick. All right, so because they're an instance, and not a copy, real quick, because these three were copies, if I change one, the others don't change. But if I change one of these, all the others change. So that's what an instance will get you instead of a copy. It can be a very powerful tool when you use it right. I'm gonna select both of those, holding the control key and selecting multiple, and raise those up. Or if we want a sad snowman, we can do that too. Then we need a couple eyes. If I copy these, they will stay referenced to each other, but not referenced to these. So if I change the size of this, only those change. But if I change the size of this, those change. It can be quite confusing remembering what's a copy versus an instance, but you'll get used to it with time. Now, while you're 3D printing, it's all gonna come out in one color. But while you're working on objects, sometimes it can be nice to have your objects be color-coded. So if you click on this icon here, whatever you have selected, you can make black or white. 3ds Max has this nice little panel over here. You can right click and choose what columns are there and you can drag stuff in there. I like to have color and name and then we'll get into some other stuff you can put there later. But you can also select stuff here, like to get all those mouth sections and change the color that way. Now, for whatever reason, 3ds Max doesn't have black and white as standard colors there, which is kind of annoying, but you can click onto one of these slots down here, choose Add Custom Colors, make some color, like if we want a snowman wearing makeup, we could create a neon pink color here. Once you've clicked Add Color, it's there. You can X out, choose that. Now, to get this into your 3D printer software, we're going to select everything with Control A, or you could click, hold Shift and click again. File, Export, save it as an STL file, and click Save. The next one is going to be building something more detailed than a snowman, where we're actually cutting objects from each other and getting into deforming things.